doing today, Braylon? We are going to make this cute little bunny bag. And what's the coolest thing about the bunny bag? It cinch up. It cinches up, so it's a little cinch bag, a little mini one. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the bunny bag kit is going to include all the fabric cut out and ready to go. You are going to have two pieces for the main outside and two pieces for the ears. And then to go with those outside pieces, we will have interfacing. So you will have two pieces of interfacing to put, to iron on to the ears, and then two pieces of interfacing for the main part of the bag, okay? And then for the lining, what do we have? We have two ears and then two of the bag pieces. So this will be the lining. So the print fabric, when I refer to the directions, the print fabric is the lining. Then we also have two strings in the kit, and these will be the drawstrings to close it up, um, to cinch the bag. So we'll put this off to the side because we'll do this last. But first thing that we're going to do is start with the interfacing, okay? Now I cut all of these kind of in batch mode, so they might not line up perfectly. If the interfacing and the fabric do not completely match, you are welcome to trim it up if you need to. Um, interfacing is going to be used to kind of stiffen the fabric and also make it a little less see-through so that you won't see the print from your lining. Now, if you're not familiar with interfacing, this is a fusible interfacing, which means we are going to iron it, right? We have the heat. Yep. So this, there's two sides to it, right? So the top side is going to be bubbly and has glue on it. And then the bottom yeah. side, the back side is just kind of smooth. Like cottony. Yeah, kind of cotton and smooth. So if we want the, the texture side, the, the bubbly side with the glue, you're gonna put the textured side on the wrong side of the fabric. So the face is the right side, the pretty side. So just gonna back it up, okay? Now this, this other piece, this is the back side. There's no right or wrong side. Correct, no right or wrong side, so just iron it on, okay? So we're gonna iron this, and then we are also going to iron the interfacing onto the ears. Same thing with the ears. No, no right or wrong side. No right or wrong side. So just gonna have glue it, glue it on with the heat of the iron. So let's go to the ironing board and get that done first, okay? Okay. Okay, so we have the iron. We're going to go ahead and we'll start with this piece because it's the mo most obvious with the right and the wrong mm -hmm. side. So again, we're gonna take the pretty side that's going to be on top and we are going to line it up with the interfacing. So we want the glued side, the bubbled side, to touch the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to line it up. Now, if you ever read the directions on interfacing, it will tell you to use a pressing cloth to cover your project. I don't usually do that though, do I? No. If you've sewn with me, you know I don't do that very often. But what you would technically do is just take a random piece of fabric, a scrap fabric, and cover it up, and then you can iron it over top. Now, the reason I don't do this is I can clean my iron pretty well, um, and I like to be able to see what I'm doing. So um, I'm not going to do that for the video, I'm just kind of letting you know the proper way to do it. I do like to have my iron, um, the steam function on, because it helps just adhere it faster. And when we do our interfacing, we do not want to go back and forth with the iron. We actually want to hold it down and count, usually I say count to 10, but I kind of just guess a little bit. And then we're gonna pick it up. And then we're gonna go over to another spot and hold it down. The reason you don't wanna go back and forth is that will cause wrinkles. We would like to avoid those. Now, if you do accidentally get a wrinkle in the fabric, it's just like glue, so it's still wet for just a little bit, so you could quickly just kind of pull it apart and try again. Also, if you're ironing, or if you're working with this and the edge starts to peel off, then just bring it back to the iron and re-iron it again. Is that pretty much cover it? Yeah. All right, so again, this is a time where I typically would suggest maybe having a parent help you. Um, Braylon is actually gonna do this. Braylon is pretty experienced with the interfacing mostly because I don't like to do it myself. <laughs> so I taught her how to do it pretty pretty early on. Um, 
But like I said, anytime you use an iron, I would like for you to make sure your parents know you're using it and if they would like to help you, let them. <laughs> All right. And we're going to just touch up that corner right there one more time, that upper corner. That should be good. All right, and then let's go ahead and do the ears. Okay, so we got all the interfacing attached to these four pieces. Now, the first thing we're going to do is start with the ears, okay? So now, there is an obvious right and wrong side to this fabric. The interface side is the wrong side, or the ugly side, and this plain cream color is going to be your pretty side, okay? So we're going to start with the ears. We're going to line up the lining and the outside piece, pretty sides kissing, okay? So go ahead, you're gonna line that up, and we will clip around the sides. Um, the clips are right here. You want to leave the bottom opened. So we'll let her start clipping that. So we're going to go pretty sides kissing. Whoops. Yes. <laughs> Got confused for a second. So pretty sides kissing. And we will clip the two sides down. But we will leave this bottom open because that is where we will go to turn it inside or right side out. Okay. So... We will go ahead and sew that right now. Okay, so we're getting ready to sew this. Now this project is actually designed for 3 8 inch seam allowance. So um, if you know where your 3 8 inch mark is on your sewing machine, then go ahead and just mark that. If you need to measure it, remember you can use a seam gauge and measure the distance from the needle and then mark it at 3 8 of an inch. So we have it all marked up. She is going to sew 3 8 of an inch around the the ear again leave the bottom open okay um you want to go slow around that pivot and you know what if you want to take an extra step one thing you can do with this pivot since you have i'll show you on this side we have a pivot right at the tip we can mark it so if you have a fabric marker and a seam gauge you can mark three eighths of an inch to Three eighths of an inch. We're gonna mark it right there. So that way you know where to pivot. So once again, if you just go from the point, mark it three eighths of an inch down and center it, you can have a mark there and that way you know where you should do your pivot. So that's just a little trick. Again, if you have those tools at home, but you can also just kind of eyeball it. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be awesome no matter what. So go ahead and mark that up. You wanna start and backstitch and sew around that. Okay, so we are gonna line this up 3 eighths of an inch. Line it up so that you can catch the beginning. A lot of times I like to use this button right to get started, just to drop it down. Now go ahead and sew your three stitches forward and then do your back stitch. One, two, three. Back stitch, one, two, three. <clears throat> and then continue going around. to that point, just want to slow down a little, and then stop. Now pick up your needle, or not your needle, pick up your presser foot, leave your needle down, and do a pivot, and then continue going around. Once you get to the end, go ahead and three stitches for back stitch, one, two, three, and then go forward again. So you're off the fabric, pick up your presser foot and your needle and cut your threads. All right. She likes to trim her threads. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and sew the other one, okay? okay? All right, so now we have the two ears sewn, pretty sides kissing. Before we go to turn these right sides out, we're gonna grab a pair of scissors and we are going to trim away half of the seam allowance. So you don't want to go too close because then it will rip. Yes, exactly. So you definitely do not want to get too close to your stitch line. Great point. Because then it just falls apart when you go to yeah. flip it right side down. I've done that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then when we get to this point, we can just kind of cut it flat, cut that extra fabric away, and then just keep on trimming around. 
Now this is nearly impossible to see because we have white thread on white fabric, but just know her stitch line is about, we took away half of it. Now the other thing you can do with this curve is just grab and kind of do little clips. This, her, if you're going to do this, it does help with the curved edges. However, you need to be super careful. I do not want you to cut through that stitch line because then you will need to go back and re-sew it and your ear will get smaller, which is fine, but it's better if you just go just tiny, tiny. So at this point, let me flip it this way. You can kind of see we just have these super small little clips in there, little cuts, okay? So we just did it at the, the curved part. You do not need to do that for the straight part. All right, Braylon, do you wanna go ahead and do this one? All right, okay. So now we have them trimmed and we have those little little cuts in it. Now this is a tube turner. If you're shaking classes with me, it's one of my favorite tools. Um, so you could, if you don't have one of these, you could put a safety pin on the edge of that and kind of flip it or you could just kind of try to turn it. But what we're going to do is put this purple tube inside of here. I always use my belly. I don't know why. And then I'm going to take the, the stick that it comes with. I like to use the flat end so I don't accidentally put a hole through it, which happens to all of us sometimes. And then we just kind of stick it through and turn it up. This takes a little bit of practice though, huh? To do this. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and then once you have turned, you can just poke yeah, it do you want to go ahead and poke that out? Okay, so now um, she has this turned out it's really good. We will go ahead and iron that out just to kind of flatten it. Now, if you don't have one of these tube turners at home, what you're going to do is just kind of slowly turn it, not slowly, but just kind of turn it inside out. Just be careful not to it. yeah not to rip it or be too strong with it and then you can use just a pencil or you know something like that you don't want you do not want to use scissors but you can use a pencil or something um, similar if you have chopsticks at home <laughs> something like that to kind of poke out your edges there and just kind of smooth it out now we are going to, like I said, we are going to iron this just to flatten it out and make it look more professional. And then we can attach it to the bunny. All right, let's go to the iron. All right, so now we have our two ears and we just need to iron these out. Um, I do sometimes take this to the iron just to once again kind of just run it along the seam just to keep it from getting folded in and then just press it. So now it just looks so much smoother and nicer, more professional, <laughs> what we're going for. <laughs> All right, and the same thing on this one. Now at this point, you could top stitch around the ear um, when you do like that edge stitch where you just sew it close to the edge. However, we are not going to do that. I have found that doesn't really make much of a difference and it's just kind of an extra step. So um, that's optional, but we are going to not do that today. So let's go ahead and put this onto the bunny face. All right, so now we have our ears all done and what we're going to do is attach the ears onto the back piece, okay? So this is the piece that doesn't have, doesn't have a face, okay? So we want to do, we will be doing pretty sides kissing, pretty side meaning the main, you know, the, the cream colored fabric. But first we have to mark where we want the ears. So Braylon and I like to do it about a half inch, so a half inch from the edge. And we will line up, so I'm going to mark it with a pin. You could also use a fabric marker or use scissors to kind of do a tiny little cut. So we just did a half inch from the edge. I got a little bit over. Let me double check that. Okay, so a half inch from the edge. I put a pin there. Now I'm going to take the ear, go pretty sides down, and I'm going to put the, the edge of the ear next to that pin, okay? And then we can 
pin this right here. Now the reason that um, we would like to do it on the towards the edge is because that way when we cinch up the bag, the ears kind of come together. Um, now remember, we are using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so the half inch mark should give us clearance to be able to still sew um, around the edge. So now, Braylon, if you want to line that up, I will go ahead. This time we're going to use scissors, so I have my scissors here and my half inch, just to make it easier for you because sometimes pinning it can be awkward. So we did a tiny little cut right there, so that way she can line up her ears. Okay, so now we have it pinned in place. What we're going to do first is baste the ears in place. So the reason we use pins instead of using the sewing clips like what we usually use is because we want to be able to sew just straight across, holding it in place, and then the clips um, get in the way of the sewing machine and it's just a small little area that we're sewing. So we'll go line this up to the edge of the presser foot and go sew that. All right, All right so we're back at the machine. We're gonna sew, um, we're going to baste this, so we're going to use the edge of the presser foot um, instead of using the tape, okay? And this is one of those times where you actually do not have to backstitch because we're just holding it in place. It's kind of just a placeholder for right now. Um, you should go to sew without moving your pins, but of course if you want to move your pins, that is fine as well. And go ahead and sew that. basted the ears onto the back piece. Now what we're going to do is put the two um, main pieces together. So pretty sides kissing, your ears are going to be sandwiched in between the two. So we're going to take your bunny face. Now one thing I want you to, to note that I haven't mentioned yet is the piece that you get in your kit is going to have two little cut marks on each side. Okay, those cut marks are a half inch, oops, a half inch from the top and then it's five eighths. Oops, sorry. So it's, and then it's five eighths inch from, you know, in between the two cuts. The reason we have that is there's going to be a drawstring casing that we will be making, and that, those marks um, we have to leave it open. So what we're going to do is we need to leave the space between the top notch and the bottom notch. We need to leave that open, so we will not be sewing that. So I'm going to explain that again in a second. I just wanted to make note of that. So what we're going to do is take the pretty side, pretty side's kissing, and where those notches are, I'm gonna grab one clip first, and clip this side. Okay, so where those notches are, we are going to use a pin. Because when I use a pin, it's usually a sign that something, something's up, right? You gotta stop, because I don't really like to use pins a ton. So I'm going to put a pin where that first notch is at, I'm going to put a pin where that second notch is. <coughs> We're going to do that on each side, and then you can finish clipping. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to sew the very top half inch. We're going to pick up our presser foot, leave that open, start at the second notch, and then sew all the way around, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. So Braylon, I will let you finish that up. to not sew. One thing I did forget um, to mention, if you look at these ears, our ears are kind of hanging low and the way they are right now they would probably get caught in the seam allowance when you sew these pieces together so we need to move them out of the way. So we're going to tuck them up and put a pin in them. Okay. The reason I'm doing this again is just so that way they don't accidentally get sewn when they're not supposed to. So have that now, Braylon can go ahead and finish clipping around. Now let's go sew it. All right, so we already have the tape on there from before, but once again, it's at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what Braylon is gonna do is she's going to sew 
just to the pin. And I usually do a back stitch right there to help secure it. We're going to pick up our needle and move it and then start sewing again once you get to the second pin. And then you can finish going around until you get over to this pin there. Okay? So now we'll line it up and go ahead. take the pins out and now at this point um, you may have noticed when Braylon was sewing she just picked up the presser foot and moved it so we still have the string attached right here so we just are going to cut that all right and now before we try to turn this right side out let's go ahead and click our corners and again, be careful when you do this, where you are just doing the curves, so clipping the curves or cutting the curves. I know I use the word clip a lot between, <laughs> between the sewing clips and then cutting the corners, but we're just gonna do little slits in here to help with that curve. And then we can turn it right side up. Okay, so we sewed it, right? Got all around, clipped our curves. Now you get to turn it inside. right side out, and I'll let you do that. Be careful, we do have pins in there holding those ears up, right? Yeah. Okay, this is what we have so far. This is gonna turn out like that. And it's gonna be so cute. All right, now before we get too excited, we do have a little bit of sewing left, right? Now we need to do the lining. So for the lining, we have two pretty sides, pretty sides kissing. You're going to line them up. Now, the good news is, you don't have to leave a hole for the casing. So you don't need to worry about that little tiny spot that you have to leave open, but we do need to leave a hole at the bottom. So we are gonna leave a hole at the bottom so that we can do a little magic trip, right? Pull the rabbit out of the hat is what I always say. <laughs> we need to leave a, leave a hole. So if you have not made a bag with me at this point, you might be questioning if I really know what I'm doing, but I promise I do. <laughs> so I put pins right there just so I can reach in there and Braylon can finish clipping the two sides. Once again, we need to leave the top open, okay? Do not sew on the top, just the, the curved sides and bottom. So go ahead and clip that. Okay, yeah. now we can go sew it. Okay, so now we have the tape still marking our 3 8 of an inch, so keep it right there. And ditch that clip, go ahead and line it up, and you're gonna sew all the way around. Remember to stop at those pins to leave a hole, okay? Okay. So start in the back stitch. Just like what we did before, I'm going to have you click your curves there. So just do those tiny little. And it usually works better if you kind of put it down on the table so that way you don't accidentally cut too much. Curves clipped, so 
So go ahead and we are going to put these together now, okay? Okay. So we need to, we're going to weave this inside out. We're going to grab this piece. This piece is right side out. Our ears are going to keep flat in the back. We are going to go ahead, actually we don't need to do that. So we're going to weave them just flat. What we're going to do is slide this so it's pretty sides kissing. We're going to kind of tuck all of this inside the lining. Yes, I know this is the lining. It's going to go on the inside. It's just not quite there yet. So we're going to tuck that on. And what we need to do is match up our raw edges. So we're going to take, we're going to start by our seams. So we're going to match up our seams right here. All right, so we match up our seams. I'm going to put a clip right there. So these are the two seam lines of the main and the lining, okay? They're gonna come over here and the same thing. The main piece and the lining, we're gonna just match up those side seams. And you can open up your seam allowance so it's flat, but if it happens to open up or close, you know, kind of fold over while you're sewing, it's okay. It'll all work out in the end, but, um, and then we're just gonna clip around here. Now at this point, if one of your pieces, like the inside or the outside, are much bigger or smaller than the other one, then you can adjust it. That just means that your seam allowance got a little bit off on one of them. So you can either seam rip that little spot or kind of um, sew, sew them up to be the same size. So this is, you can see this one's been sewn correctly and they are both the same size and fit inside of each other well. So now she is going to go sew around the top of this. All right, so now we're going to sew these two pieces together, just sewing around the top. Now, you'll notice this can't fit underneath there, right? So what we do is we're gonna kind of sew it, I always say sewing it upside down. I don't really know the right way to say it. But we're sewing it so that the presser foot is gonna line up. Okay, so this can get kind of tricky. At this point, we're gonna take away some of our clips we're gonna kind of hold it, but you can kind of see that it's kind of over top of it, right? So we're just gonna kind of hold it off to the side, keep it lined up, sorry, keep it lined up to the tape and just kind of go around in a circle. So you do wanna sew this a little bit slower than normal because we need to adjust it while you're sewing it, okay? So go ahead and get that started. She is just adjusting the circle. Sorry, Brandon likes to sew really close up, so hopefully you can kind of see. Okay, so she sewed around the whole top. Now here comes the magic. And I'm going to let Braylon do this. She's going to start to pull this out through that hole, right? We left a hole in the lining. Go ahead and pull that out. going to tuck so this is where your hole is at hole closed. yep so you're going to tuck it under right and go ahead and grab some clips Braylon all right and she is just going to sew this to sew that hole closed all right okay so now again you're just sewing that hole shut 
At this point, you either want to use the presser foot or the 1 8 inch notch. So, um, which one do you want to use, Braylon? We'll use the notch. Use the notch? All right. So, she's going to just eyeball this. This is just the inside, so I don't get too stressed out about it. Um, go ahead and just so I did put a pin here, so that way you know when to stop. After that, we will be sewing a line for our casing right there. So we'll go to the, we'll iron it and then go to the sewing machine and match up where you're going to sew and then we get to thread the ribbon and it'll be done. Getting close. Okay, so now what we need to do is sew a casing around here. Now it's going to be hard to do that with the size of the bag being small. So we are going to turn it inside out and then she's going to do that same trick where we sew it kind of like upside down with the presser foot all the way around. So this part could get a little bit tricky. I do want you to sew it slow, okay? Okay, so we turned it right side out or inside out. I'm going to use a pin and I'm going to mark right below where that casing is. It's about five eighths of an inch. And now what I'm gonna do is line up that pin with the needle, okay? So I see where it's at. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see because I need to move the tape now. We're changing our seam allowance. So we're going to move it right there. Okay. And now our goal is going to be to sew all the way around, keeping it lined up to the tape. And at this point, Raylan doesn't usually sew with a magnet, but I am going to put a magnet here just to kind of help keep that lined up. I like to use those magnets with makes it a little bit more obvious. So sew around this slow because it's kind of small and bulky. I am going to take this pin out. Um, at this point, if you needed, I didn't mention this yet, her thread is white and that's the color that she's going to want. But if I had like a hot pink on the inside, I maybe would want a hot pink bobbin, right? So you want to match your bobbin to what your lining is at this point. And then you would, I mean, I think white is great for the outside of that. Okay, so go ahead and sew all the way around. Once you get back to where you started, then you can do, you can back stitch and end. tape in the kit um, but you could also use like a ribbon or we've made bias tape before but this will work for this so you're going to grab a safety pin hopefully you have one at home 
and put the safety pin on the end. So I just kind of loop it through so that way it's on the end of there. And you left those holes, right? So what we're gonna do is put the safety pin through the hole. So the hole is right, oops, right here. So put the safety pin in. <coughs> and what we do is kind of bunch it up. I'm gonna hold onto the safety pin and pull it, okay? So safety pin is right here. Kind of bunch it up on the safety pin and pull it out. You are going to go all the way around until you get back to where you started. So I, I went past this first hole, kept going until I got back to, until I get back to this other one where I started. And sometimes you might have to kind of move the, the seam allowance around a little bit so that way you can, oops, goodness, get the safety pin back out. So, okay, so we're just kind of bunching it up. Once we get back to this hole where we started, we're gonna pull the safety pin out. And I made the tape extra long so that way you would have plenty of room to tie a knot. So for right now, we can just kind of can take that out. You know what, we're right here, we might as well. We're just gonna tie a little knot here. But you don't wanna like make it go all the way to the end right there. Right, we're gonna leave a little bit of a loop. Um, good point. So, and we'll trim this up in a minute. Let's go ahead and Braylon, do you want to do this one? Okay. All right, so I'll put the safety pin on. What you're going to do is now loop it through the other side, okay? Okay. Okay, now at this point, it's really bunched up, right? So just kind of Oh, and your safety pin came into. We're just gonna kind of try to wiggle it so that we get this string to come shorter. Now, the other string was already in there, so I gave Braylon the more difficult part because she had to kind of move around the string that was in there already. But she got it through. Now we can take the safety pin off, and we can we can knot this side to it. I like to make them kind of the same length. And the important part is, is make sure your bunny is open as big as it goes. Um, just to make sure you tie it <coughs> big enough. And I am not the best knot tier, but just kind of try to make sure it's secure. All right, do the honors. What happens when you pull the strings? Nice. Oh, Little bunny face. All right, so. I guess one thing we did forget to do was trim. <coughs> so we're gonna trim off these extra strings. Make sure you're cutting the ends and not the ribbon. Okay, so we're gonna just cut the, the ends there. Gonna make sure they're the same length. This twill tape, I do not think will fray too badly, but you could always um, put a little bit of fray check on there, or we could have tied a, a knot or something too, but there you go. It's done. Super cute. Perfect.